What's going on everybody? Kalipas Tech here, coming back at you with another video. This is the beginner's guide to the Samsung Galaxy S21 FE. In this video, I'm going to be giving you some tips and tricks for this phone to help you get started. Now before we go any further, I do want to remind you to go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you want to learn more about the phone, be sure to watch my full review of it as well. But with that being said, let's get started. So the first thing I want to show you is how to change your wallpaper. This is a real easy thing to do, and it's probably among the first things you're going to want to do when you get the phone. So all you need to do is go to your settings, which by the way, there are several different ways to do this. First of all, you can just go to the app drawer. The settings app is right here. You can also drag it onto your home screen. So as you can see, you can pretty much put it anywhere, or you can open your quick menu by swiping down twice. And settings is right here. But anyway, to change your wallpaper from the settings menu, you're going to want to go to wallpaper and style. And here you can choose between Samsung wallpapers or something from your photos. Now that was easy enough, but I'm going to show you an even faster way to not only change your wallpaper, but also do things like customize widgets and change your home screen settings in general. So all you need to do is press and hold your finger on any blank spot on your home screen like this. And as you can see, the wallpaper section does show up and you can also change your themes, widgets, and home screen settings in general. You can also scroll through all these pages so you can get a better idea of what your home screen actually looks like. The next thing I'm going to show you is how to change the refresh rate. Now by default, this display does have a 120Hz refresh rate, which is going to make the movement on the screen a little bit faster and smoother, giving it a more premium feel. I don't know if you can really tell the difference just from this video, but when you're actually using the phone, you definitely will notice, and in addition to this, when you're consuming content, like streaming a video or playing a game, again, having a higher refresh rate will make a difference. But unfortunately, this is going to consume a little more battery, so if you want to save some power with this phone, you can actually revert it to a 60Hz refresh rate instead. So to do this, we're going to go to settings, from here, go to display, Go to motion smoothness and as you can see by default it is going to be on high but if you want to save some power you can change it to standard instead don't forget to hit apply and once you hit apply it's going to go back to the 60 hertz refresh rate and as you can see it does make a little bit of a difference but you probably can't tell a whole lot unless of course you're actually in person using the phone but you get the picture now personally, just because of how I use this phone, I like to just keep it at high. But if you're in a situation where you need to use your phone, but you don't necessarily do a whole lot of content consumption, and you'd rather just get a little bit longer battery life, then being able to change the refresh rate of your display to 60 hertz from 120 does make at least a little bit of a difference. So the next thing I'm going to show you is some notification settings. Notifications are definitely one of the most important settings to change when you get a phone because I don't know about you, but I personally don't like getting a bunch of notifications from different apps that I barely ever use. So let's take a look at what we can customize and how. So we're going to go to settings, go to notifications, and probably one of the most important things in this menu is controlling which apps can send you notifications. So under the recently sent section, if you hit more, you're going to see all the apps that have sent you notifications within the last seven days. Now, honestly, I wish they just did all apps in general, not just within the last seven days. But I guess in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't really make a whole lot of a difference. But regardless, this is where you're going to be able to toggle off notifications from apps you don't want to hear from. So for example, I really don't need notifications from Spotify. I don't really know what they would possibly send me that would be important. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this off. Google, I just know from experience, that's just going to be annoying. Snapchat, so here's one you might want notifications from, but I don't really use the app a whole lot, so I'm just going to turn this off. But you get the picture, you can go through this entire list and turn off the notifications from whatever apps you don't want to hear from. And this can definitely save you some trouble, because this way you're not going to have your phone blowing up with things you don't care about and disrupting whatever you're doing. So another thing for notifications is if we go over to advanced settings, up top, you're going to have some options for the status bar. So by default, when you get notifications, it's going to show you the three most recent ones in the status bar. But you can also have it show all notifications, which is going to look really messy. I don't really recommend that. You can also have it only show the number of notifications. And if you don't want anything up there, you can select none as well. Here, you can also show and hide the battery percentage. So by default, it is showing up here. But if you don't want it to, you can simply toggle it off. 
Now the next thing I want to show you is what you can change in the sound settings. So of course, to customize your sounds, you're going to want to go to settings. From here, go to sounds and vibration. And the first thing we're going to see here is the sound mode. As you can see, the sound is on right now, but keep in mind that if you want the phone to vibrate too, you're going to have to toggle this on because by default, it's going to either make sound or vibrate, not both unless you have vibrate while ringing on. Underneath this, you can control the volumes of pretty much everything. So if we go to the volume menu, you're going to see the ringtone up top, media. So if you're watching a video, playing a game, listening to music, pretty much anything, that's what this is going to control. Then we got the notifications and finally the system sound. And as you can see, by default, the volume keys, whenever you use them, are going to be for media. You can also change the vibration patterns and intensity for both calls and notifications. Now, the next thing I'm going to show you is how to customize your screen lock. By default, it's going to be a pin and you're going to get this pin as soon as you turn on the phone for the first time. But to change all that, we're going to go to settings. From here, go to lock screen. And as you can see up here, we got the screen lock type, tap on this, enter your current pin. And as you can see, you can choose between swipe, pattern, pin, password, or you could just have nothing at all. You can also turn on biometrics, so the face lock and the fingerprints. Now keep in mind that in order to set up the face unlock and the fingerprint scanner, you're going to have to go to a different section. So let me show you where that is. We're going to go back to the main settings menu. And from here, you're going to want to go to biometrics and security. So down here. And as you can see, we got face unlock and fingerprints. In both the face unlock and the fingerprints have some on-screen instructions that are really easy to follow that are going to walk you through registering all this information. And once you get either a fingerprint or your face registered, it's automatically going to be added to your screen lock so you can use it. So if you ever want to turn off either face unlock or the fingerprint scanner, you're going to have to go back to the lock screen menu, go to screen lock type, of course, enter your pin again, and you'll have the option under biometrics to turn off whatever you don't want to use. The next thing I'm going to show you is how to change the system navigation. Now this phone, as you can see right here, does have the classic three button system navigation, pretty typical for an Android phone. But nowadays, there's another type of navigation called gesture navigation that's getting a little bit more popular. It has a more minimalistic look, and it works especially nice with a flagship phone like this. So let me show you how you can use it. So what we're going to do is go to settings. From here, go to display. In the display menu, you're going to see navigation bar right here. And as you can see, by default, we are on button navigation, but you can also change the order of the buttons or you can change to gesture navigation. So now, as you can see, we're currently in gesture navigation. The buttons are replaced with this little bar down here. So let me show you how this type of navigation works. In order to go home, swipe your finger up from the bottom like this. To go to your recent apps, drag your finger up instead. And to go back, swipe from left to right or right to left. It doesn't matter which direction, as long as it goes from one side to the other. Now, I personally like gesture navigation, but it's definitely not for everyone. So if you haven't already, I definitely recommend trying it out to see if it's a feature you like, because at the end of the day, when it comes to system navigation, there's really no right or wrong answer. It's really going to be based on personal preference. The next thing I'm going to show you is how to take a screenshot. Now, this is a real easy thing to do. All you need to do is press the power key and the volume down key at the same time like this. Now that was easy enough, but with this phone, there's also another way to take a screenshot. Now, whether or not this is actually easier than the normal way is a little debatable, but it is kind of cool, so let me show you. So what you're going to want to do is swipe your palm across the screen like this. As you can see, it's a little tricky. There we go. The bar shows up as usual. And just so you know, if you miss that bar because it doesn't last for very long, you can find all your screenshots in the notification center. Now the next thing I'm going to show you is how to turn on your mobile hotspot. So in case you don't know what it is, basically the mobile hotspot is going to turn your phone's data into a Wi-Fi network. And this can be really useful if you have, say, a tablet or a computer or something like that. And you're in an area with no Wi-Fi, so definitely real convenient. Now you can activate the mobile hotspot through your settings, but there's an easier way to do that. All you really need to do is open the quick menu by dragging your finger down twice. So once for the notification center and twice for the quick menu. And mobile hotspot is right here. Just tap on the icon. When it's filled in, of course, that means the mobile hotspot is on. 
The last thing I'm going to show you is how to turn on dark mode. This is real easy. All you need to do is go to settings. From here, go to display. And dark mode is going to be right up here. So as you can see, by default, it is in light mode. But if you hit dark, it's going to change. You can also customize some settings. So if we go to dark mode settings, as you can see, you can schedule it. So you can turn it on from sunset to sunrise or a custom time. But that was my beginner's guide to the Samsung Galaxy S21 FE. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you found this information useful as well. If you did, don't forget to leave a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And as always, I will see you in the next video.